excellent. Notations, reading domain, reading the range, sketching the graph, and then solving. Yeah? So it's the same thing now. We're just putting them all together. I've got a um, quick revision sheet on just chapter four and how to sketch the graphs, you know, and the answers are inside. But that's just to practice revision. Okay? We'll do more revision starting, well, it's today technically, but we'll do more on Friday. And then we have Monday as well. You've got the weekend. Yeah? But here we go. Exercise 5F. Let's do the first example. Copy this down. Or if you want, just have a look at the from your textbook, example 18, before exercise 5F. Yep. I thought I had paper, and I don't have paper, but you can write the back. Okay, here we go. Let's read. Let's see what we've learnt from chapter 5. What is this called again? What is this called? Can I please have Simone? When you write it as F colon and then you got something maps on R, what is this called? Not sure. What's the name of this again? What do we call that? It is function function notation. This is called function notation. Now in year 12, this is the notation you should always use when they ask you to define a rule, find a rule, or find the inverse, or whatever it is. When they mention about a function or a rule, that's how you're meant to write it. Because it's a two mark question, your job is to find the domain and then the function. Okay, so those who have gone ahead and did 5G, found the inverse function, you'll be doing that a lot next year. So learn that notation. You need a domain, always map onto R, because we're dealing with numbers and methods the function that's how we write them okay now let's read this I already just said that this represents the domain what does it mean when it's R what's R mean again will that's your R Hamish real numbers what does real numbers mean Lauren yeah every number any number that you think of is called real numbers okay so any number so this is any number that you can think of. So what this means is the domain can be any number you want for this graph. And you've got an AX plus B. What kind of graph is that? Is that quadratic? Is it linear? Is it hyperbola? It is linear because it's to the power of 1. So we know it's a straight line. Now they tell you that F of 1 equals 7. Now that's the first step. What does it mean when they say F of 1 equals 7? Someone explain. Seb. Fantastic. That's that's the key part that you have to understand. We're trying to learn how to read the notation. This just means when x equals 1, y, which is the whole entire function, is equal to 7. Now I'll show you why it looks like that. So when you say f of 1 equals 7, you already know x is equal to 1. If you sub x equals to 1 into the equation, so f of x now becomes f of 1, you sub 1 into x becomes a times 1 plus b. But you see this? a times 1 is a plus b becomes a plus b. But f of 1, they already told you. It says f of 1 equals 7. So instead of writing f of 1, you can write that as 7. That's why it's the y value. That's why we're saying, we're just saying, when you sub x in, that's the y. That's the y value. So y equals 7. Because we're saying f of 1 is equal to 7. I'm just replacing the f of 1 as 7. And f of 1 just means sub 1 in. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've used the first piece of information and I've got myself equation 1. a plus b equals 7. The next one, what does f of 5 equals 19 mean then, Anna? What's f of 5 equals 19 mean? Yeah, that's all it means. It really is just trying to tell you a coordinate. They're telling you x is 5 and y is 19. So if you follow the same drill again, sub f of 5 equals 19. You'd be saying sub x to be 5, and then you know that f of 5 is apparently equal to 19. So replace it, and you get 19 equals to 5a plus b. Now you've got an equation 2. That's equation 1. Equation 2, you've got two unknowns that you want to find. Your goal is to find a and b. Ian, um, what's the like arrow? Where? This one? Yeah. This one just means maps on two. And when I describe it, it just means that you are drawing it out from this. 
So the example I gave to you was ice cream. Yeah? Or cars. Ice cream, I could call this ice cream, so maps onto ice cream. So it means out of the ice cream, what flavors do I have? I could say chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. So that's your domain. So domain is what you're selecting. So I can have chocolate, ice cream, I mean chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. But what is that coming from? Ice cream. So in this case here, this just means numbers. The numbers I'm choosing are all numbers. From where am I getting it from? All numbers. That's all I mean. So in method, because we're only dealing with numbers. So you can have like Q to R. Yes. Yes, you can. Wait, say that again? Yeah. So Q to R would just mean out of the numbers you're selecting, you're only taking rational numbers. That's it. That's all it means. Okay, well, don't worry about it. It's just a symbol. Methods is always going to be arrow R. So just remember that. Okay? It's always going to be arrow R. Okay, now. Next part. So now that we've got two equations, we want to solve for A and B. How do we do that? Simultaneous. Elimination method or simultaneous or elimination or substitution, whatever method you want to use. Okay, I like elimination, just makes it easier. I can already see B take away B is going to cancel out. So I would say take equation two, take away equation one, and that will be able to cancel out the B. So that's what I'm going to say. Equation two, take away equation one. Now think about it. B take away B will cancel out. 5A take away A is 4A. 19 take away 7 is 12. To find A, you would? 3A. Good. Good. Divide both sides by 4. A equals 3. Now, if you know A equals 3, how do I find B? Wait. Somebody just put A back in. Yeah. I would sub it back into this equation because that's the simplest one. Why, why, do, why do it to this one? This takes too long. Just sub in. If A is 3, 3 plus something has to equal to 7. 4. Done. Therefore, B equals 4, since 7 equals to A plus B. Does that make sense what I'm doing? So what was hard about this, it wasn't elimination method. It wasn't all this. It's the interpretation of what F1 equals 7, F5 equals 19, what that means. Okay, and reading that. That's called function notation, and that's what I'm trying to teach you. Learning the language for Chapter 5. Chapter 4 is sketching. Domain, range, and learning how to read set notations. Yeah? Try another one. Same thing, I want you to read what they've given you, okay? So oh, let's read. Sketch Sorry? Sketch oh, it doesn't tell you sketch. Wait, no? And sketch. Oh, it does it's tell you. Trend. Sorry, yeah, my bad. Trend. I didn't even sketch it. Okay, let's sketch this now. You are to sketch. Now you know that A is uh, 3 and B was 4. So you're trying to sketch the equation of Y equals to 3x plus 4. How do you sketch a linear equation? What do you need? Y intercept and? X. X intercept. What's the Y intercept for this one? Four. four. So I already got four. So zero, four. And then to find X intercept, you would? Make Y equal to zero. So let's solve it. Three X plus four. Negative four equals to three X. Therefore, X must equal to? Negative four over three, which is one and a third. Negative one and a third. So it's over here somewhere. So negative one and a third. There we go. Done. Now, because it says the domain can be any number, so when you draw it, it should have an arrow on each end. But things like, how do many with mx plus b? Because they gave me him. They said ax plus b. We found a, we found b. Yeah? All right, there we go. So now I've got my equation. And remember, draw the arrows just to say that you're going infinitely because the domain is r, so it doesn't restrict it. If the domain was different, if it said only from 1 to 2, then you only sketch 1 to 2 of the graph. But so because it's R, you can sketch all zones, so that's why the graph continues on. But it's you're only you're a portion. You're in the Oh yeah. So if you want to do that, you can then say X element, which means a part of or is a member of, and then ah. So that just means domain. So that means domain. If you use X, that means the domain, because domain means X values. So I'm like X is a part of any number. So that's why x is part of any number. Okay. Notations, x size 5a. Yeah? Next one. Let's go. Find the quadratic yeah. function. Now you're going to use what you learned in chapter 3 of quadratics. Same skill. I did this for your SAC as well. Uh, this time you've got a second go now. Okay, so a second go to really try to understand what I did. So here we go. We've got a quadratic function. Remember, when you're trying to find an equation, it means that you've got to find a. Don't forget the a. That's what you guys forgot a lot in the, when we came to the SAC. Yeah? Let's read this now. F of 4 equals, F of negative 2 equals 0. 
That's the key step to try to understand first. What does it mean when they say f of 4 is equivalent to whatever f of negative 2 is, but that's also equal to 0? So if you break it apart, if f of 4 is equal to 0, and f of negative 2 is also equal to 0, and they're all equal to 0, what does this mean here? F equals 0, G. F equals 0. Now, in terms of the coordinates, what do you already know? This means x equals 4, and this means y equals 0. Now, if I ask you the coordinates for 0, and this is negative 2, 0, what are they giving you so far? B? Two coordinates. Well, they're very special coordinates right now. They are? Yeah, they're the x-intercepts. Negative 4, I mean, 4, 0 is just here. That's 4, 0. And then they gave you negative 2, 0. So you should already pick up. That's, a, that's an x-axis intercept. So remember quadratics. If you know the x-intercepts, how do you write the equation? You mentioned it before. Yeah. You would say the function, remember, if you already know the x-intercepts at negative 2, you have an x plus 2. And if you have 4, then it has to be x, x minus 4. Now this is what you guys did in the SAT. Most of you got this by looking at the x in a set. Fantastic, but what were you missing? A. A. Where does A go? The front. That's what you were missing in the SAT. So you got A at the front, but how do you solve for A? And I always said there's only one skill. Yeah, they give you another coordinate. But you don't use these ones, because you already use those ones to get these. Okay, so you already use four, and you use negative two, so it's here. The only one that you haven't used F0 equals 16. And that's what the exercise I tried to do for your sacks. For both sacks, cubics and quadratics, I gave you a graph and it was exactly the same way. Your goal was to write A, dilation factor, and then use your x intercepts to figure out your factors. Yeah? So here, you now know, using this coordinate here, f of 0, so when x equals 0, y equals 16, you just need to sub that in to solve. So sub that in, 16 equals to A times 0 plus 2. 0 minus 4, a times 2 times negative 4, <coughs> and that's what, negative 8a. Therefore, good. <coughs> there you go. Done. <coughs> Lazy handwriting. But there you go. Okay, so what you can see is what was hard about this exercise is nothing you haven't seen. A lot of it was all done. You've done this exercise before. That's exercise from chapter 3, the last exercise, 3L and 3K. That's where I was sitting at. What you learnt new in chapter 5 is reading. Reading the notation is what you're trying to do for chapter 5. Okay, so the better you can read it, decipher it, write it out, the better it is to do these questions. Okay, so that's what I did for your sack for both chapter 3 and chapter 6. Hopefully now you picked that up. Okay? Well, if someone the cast right, like, I can't get a cast on. No, but the, the sack that I have got for on Tuesday, there is no cow. It's just non uh, I, I mean, I got revision one. I got revision You got revision You got a revision one. I got revision one. Yes, we are going to do that. That's cool. As long as you do your revision two. I can give you all sheets, Ian. It's just whether you do the work or not. Of course you can't remember.